Welcome to a new session on professionalizing natural science education. Non-formal science education. Education aims at bringing all-round development of the students. Classroom teaching and teaching in a restricted and rigid types of environment do not serve the purpose of the all-round development of the students. To develop a child's personality and realize his hidden potentialities, he needs a very flexible, comfortable, open and recreational environment. Life itself is education. The purpose of education is to prepare an individual for life and should be organized accordingly. The objective of education is to provide knowledge and the ability to apply it, develop understanding, sharpen skills and other hidden qualities through classroom teaching learning in an environment which is structured and at the same time flexible. These objectives can be attained by means of various programs and activities in school and outside. This approach to education is called non-formal education and when applied to science teaching it is known as non-formal science education. Science teaches us about nature natural phenomena and everything that exists in nature and interaction among them. Therefore, science cannot and should not be taught in a rigid environment within the school or classroom boundaries. It should be taught and learned accordingly by taking students out for excursions and by organizing various activities which have scientific outlook. Need for non-formal education Article 45 of the Constitution of India seeks to provide free and compulsory education to all children up to the age of 14 years. However, less than half in the age group 11 to 14 and about one fourth in the age group 14 to 17 are in schools. There is also a high percentage of dropouts at the elementary stage. Even for the children who go through the first cycle of formal education, a crucial question is that how relevant education do they get in the school in terms of meeting their minimum essential needs. In addition to the problem of providing universal primary education, there is an equally acute problem of illiterate youth and adults. The number of illiterates has gone up. This is mainly due to the high rate of population growth. In the present situation, what is crucial is the ability and speed with which millions of illiterate children and youth out of school can be provided education in addition to the illiterate adults. It is just impossible to reach all children, youths and adults out of school through the channel of formal education system. Hence, it is being realized by the educationists that the problem of universalization of primary education as well as adult education cannot be solved through formal schooling. Non-formal modes of education must complement the formal system of education if learning opportunities are to become widespread. Formal as well as non-formal modes of education should not be considered as mutually exclusive but complementary to each other in achieving the goals of education. Non-formal mode of education It is an organized activity with educational purposes carried on outside the highly structured framework of formal educational systems and consists of an assortment of separate educational activities not bound by age restrictions, time schedules and sequences to keep in line with the levels of academic standards. It can assume a variety of forms and use any pedagogical method or methods to suit the specific requirements of the learners. The informal mode of education differs from the non-formal one in that it is incidental without being organized and pre-planned learning experiences whether in school or outside school. Characteristics of Non-Formal Science Education It covers all areas of formal education including rural development, nutrition, health, family planning and agriculture. It exploits available time and interest of individuals in bringing out the inherent knowledge so that individuals can improve conditions of living. 
it is learner oriented it is based on dialogue between learner and education it is usually flexible contextualized and uses a participatory approach it could be for kids youth and adults it is socially purposeful and seen as a part of radical social transformation movement flexible curriculum focus on practical skill and knowledge it focuses on disadvantaged groups as youth women poor and marginalized group creative use of educational resources and lifelong learning non formal education and learning theories non formal education tends to draw heavily on both constructivism and socio cultural approaches now let us see these two aspects in detail constructivists view learners as active participants in the construction of their knowledge socio cultural approach founded by vygotsky values the social dimension of learning and the influence on learning of wider social cultural and historical contexts in constructivism knowledge is not a static entity that can be passed from one person to the others it takes time to learn as significant knowledge building results from play pondering reflection and the revisiting of ideas under socio cultural approach learning is the result of interactions between people tools language signs and symbols in a particular setting or context in constructivism learners learn through their personal interactions motivation is a key component in learning the construction of meaning is intimately associated with our connection to other human beings conversation interaction with others collaboration and the application of knowledge are integral aspects of learning under socio cultural approach learning occurs both individually and collectively whether that's in a small group class team organization or online community so that the collective knowledge is greater than and different from the sum of the knowledge of individuals under constructivism the teacher's role is to design the appropriate learning environment and material that foster the construction of individuals learning under socio cultural approach the teacher's role is to provide a scaffolding to reach the potential development level from the actual development quickly constructivism in the constructivist view learner is an active participant in the construction of their own knowledge socio cultural approach This approach values social dimension of learning and influence on learning of wider social, cultural and historical contexts. Learning results in interaction between people, tools, language, sign and symbols in a particular setting or context. Nature of subject matter of biological sciences. It becomes absolutely clear from the subject matter of the biological sciences that it is not possible to conduct its teaching learning only by speech or hearing that is it cannot be taught like other social sciences on the contrary the following process is followed in the teaching learning of biological sciences they are demonstrated they are inspected they are experienced different functional and practical activities and tasks are used in its teaching learning the use of science laboratories and practical tasks are certainly useful in the teaching learning of biological sciences but the extensive objectives of teaching of biological sciences cannot be obtained only by them it is necessary to assimilate the knowledge and skill of biological sciences in the practical life and to create interest and favorable attitude towards its study it is necessary that the following qualities are created in the students curiosity towards scientific discoveries experiments and uses desire for invention 
development of creativity. In the direction of creating the above qualities, only classroom teaching and laboratory work are not sufficient. The students need something more than that. Non-formal education programs Recognizing the importance of non-formal mode of education, the Government of India has already initiated pilot projects with the help of UNICEF and UNESCO in many parts of the country to provide education to children in the age group 6 to 15 through non-formal methodology. It is planned to achieve 100% universalization of primary education through formal and non-formal modes of education in the next couple of years. There is also a trend towards opening part-time secondary schools and correspondence courses in secondary education. The other programs of non-formal education which are being conducted by the government include Farmers Functional Literacy Programs, National Minimum Needs Programs, Balwadis, Non-Formal Centers of Education, Polyvalent Adult Education Centers and Nehru Yuva Kendras. Non-Formal Approaches in Science Education Following non-formal science education programs are being conducted in India. Science clubs, field trips, scientific hobbies, science fairs and exhibitions, science museums, Jawahar Bal Bhavans, Vikram A. Sarabhai Community Science Centre, Kishore Bharti, Nature Clubs of India, Indian Association for Extracurricular Scientific Activities. Science Clubs Learning by doing and learning by living are two cardinal principles of teaching and the same is true in the case of teaching science. It is a natural urge in children to make things, to break things and to handle things. But the present curriculum does not provide ample opportunities for self-expression, independent research, constructive activities and other projects. Hence, there arises a need for an organization which may provide an outlet for the pent-up emotions of children and channelize their energies towards desirable goal. It will help in satisfying the instincts and urges of children and making them a full-fledged personality. An organization which caters for the inculcation of scientific attitude, a genuine interest in science and scientific activities, supplements the work of the classroom and the laboratory is the science club. Values of a science club Clubs extend learning beyond the physical limits of the classroom. The science club helps to bring together students whose interest in science acts as a common denominator. A science club encourages learning by doing. Clubs provide an opportunity for students not only to interact with one another but also to develop qualities of independence, persistence, originality and curiosity. A science club by organizing debates, seminars etc. can provide students with realistic career guidance. So, there should be science clubs up to higher secondary stage which may provide a large number of activities and thereby widen and deepen the interest of pupils and provide means of developing desirable ways of utilizing leisure time. Field Trips In the field trips, the student comes into contact with nature. The student studies the different animals in their natural habitat or environment. The student observes the deep mysteries and creations of nature. This develops in him or her interest towards biological sciences. The direct experience develops the student's observation power. The student becomes capable to use different organs simultaneously. The theoretical knowledge obtained in the classroom finds its practical manifestation in field trips to different places under educational touring program. Educational significance of field trips. Field trips help in understanding the environment, 
its relationship with living and non-living and the interaction of each other. A well-organized field trip helps pupils to learn concepts and principles of science. Field trip encourages individual practical work. Field trip provides vast resources of the world outside the classroom furnishing ready-made laboratories for the study of science. Field trips provide an opportunity to learn about the ecological problems, their importance and relationship with the people. Field studies provide learning in a social setting which helps students to make social, economic and scientific interpretations of scientific concepts. Field studies provide an opportunity to study the practical application of science. Scientific Hobbies One of the aims of teaching science is to train the pupils to use their leisure time most effectively by catering to their individual interests through a number of activities. Every individual has his own interests and capabilities and other differences. These individual differences can find their expression most effectively in spare time activities which we call as hobbies. The keeping of pets and maintaining aquaria and vivaria etc. provide abundant delight. Excursions to places of interest and the follow up work provide knowledge and experience besides satisfying travel urge. In this way the pupils interest find expression and satisfaction through the spare time activities and extracurricular activities. Science fairs and exhibitions The science fairs and exhibitions have social, intellectual, psychological and educational values. The students take part in group projects and activities and learn many things which cannot be learned through classroom teaching. They develop not only intellectually but also socially, psychologically and educationally. The instincts of construction, acquisition, curiosity etc. also get satisfaction. Their talents are recognized and stimulated. They develop a keen taste and interest for scientific investigations and in solving scientific problems. Over and above all, the science fairs provide an excellent opportunity for discovering and encouraging science talent. The students should be encouraged to take part in science fairs and exhibitions at district, state or national level. Importance of science fairs The science fairs have social, intellectual, psychological and educational values. The students take part in group projects and activities and learn many things which cannot be learned through classroom teaching. The instincts of construction, acquisition, curiosity etc. also get satisfaction. Their talents are recognized and stimulated. They develop a keen taste and interest in scientific investigations and in solving scientific problems. The science fairs provide an excellent opportunity for discovering and encouraging science talent. Science Museums The knowledge and skill of science cannot be acquired only through telling or reading. It requires active experimentation, careful observation and demonstration of the scientific facts and principles within their natural surroundings. It means that what is being learnt in the sciences can be properly learnt through direct experiences with the available facts and principles within their natural surroundings and occurrence for their proper assimilation and application. However, it is not feasible always to take the students in the natural surroundings for observing and experimenting with the facts and principles of science. In this situation, the collection of the natural objects of scientific interest in the form of science museum may prove quite effective and beneficial for studying the related scientific facts and processes. Advantages of Science Museum 
Besides proving his worth as a valuable aid in the teaching learning process, the organization of Science Museum in the school acts as a great source of inspiration for the budding scientists. It helps the students to get properly acquainted with their physical and social environment. The students come across some rare phenomena or objects of scientific interest which are otherwise not seen in normal circumstances. The study of scientific facts and principles becomes quite interesting and easy by the close observation of specimen and models available in the museum. It helps in developing love for nature study among the students. Opportunity to collect scientific objects and specimens according to their own interest and taste helps the students in the proper satisfaction of their holding instinct. It helps in the proper development of the observation facilities of the children. The instinct of curiosity is properly satisfied by observing quite new and rare objects and phenomena. It helps in developing scientific attitude among the students and in creating a healthy spirit of learning and knowing new things. Jawahar Bal Bhavans These institutions were opened after independence in the name of late Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. There are at present 12 Bal Bhavans in the 12 cities namely Ahmedabad, Allahabad, Bangalore, Mumbai, Kolkata, Delhi, Gauhati, Hyderabad, Chennai, Pondicherry, Srinagar and Tiruvannandapuram. The bhavans cater to the needs of children up to the age of 14 years. Some of the activities organized by Bal Bhavans include dancing, painting, clay work, carpentry, drama, Debates, stargazing, stamp collection, coin collection, radio repairs, gardening, etc. Besides organizing activities for children, the Bal Bhavans also conduct training programs for teachers. Vikram A. Sarabhai Community Science Center In the memory of late Prime Minister Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, the Nehru Foundation for Development was opened in 1966 by Vikram Sarabhai in Ahmedabad, Gujarat. In order to promote the cause of social and educational development through the use of science and technology, the Community Science Centre was created under the auspices of the Nehru Foundation for Development. The main objectives of the centre are to promote scientific thinking in science teachers and students, to inculcate the skills of observation, hypothesis, experimentation, conclusions and prediction. Since its inception, the centre has been providing facilities to the scientists, teachers and pupils to try out new ideas in science learning. It has organised a variety of community oriented activities in science such as science film shows, science exhibitions, popular lectures, do-it-yourself laboratory, open house programs, hobbies, science puppet shows, science lecture series, etc. It has brought out a number of publications and audiovisual aids. The centre also bring out periodically a wall science newspaper. Kishore Bharati this is a voluntary organization located at Palia Piparia village in Hoshangabad district in Madhya Pradesh. The main objectives of the center are to infuse self-confidence amongst young villagers in agro-based activities, to strengthen their faith in cooperative endeavor as an effective means of solving community problems, to try to stop urban migration of the village youth in search of scarce menial jobs. Although the organization is working for rural development, it also has programs in education in general as well as in science education. It is making efforts to improve science education methods in the surrounding schools. The program lays a special emphasis on science through experiments. 
science exhibitions are also organized in the village for the benefit of children and the community. Nature Clubs of India The World Wildlife Fund sponsors Nature Clubs of India which publish newsletters and undertakes nature trails in different parts of the country. Hundreds of schools have become members of the Nature Clubs of India. Indian Association for Extracurricular Scientific Activities This association was founded in 1968 and has been actively involved in conducting out-of-school science programs. It organized the first All India Students Fair in 1970 in collaboration with the Indian Science Congress Association. It also organized UNESCO Regional Seminar for Leaders of the Youth Science Activities in Asia in cooperation with the NCRT. Let us summarize the session. Non-formal systems reveal the constant presence of two features. Centralization of the process on the student as to his previously identified needs and possibilities and the immediate usefulness of the education for the student's personal and professional growth. Non-formal education seems better to meet the individual needs of students. Participants are led to non-formal programs because these offer the expertise that they hope to acquire and the necessary assistance for a better understanding of their own selves and of their world. As non-formal education is focused on the student, it presents flexible features, objectives and contents. It is therefore quicker to react in face of the changes that may affect the needs of students and of the community. With basis on these preliminary considerations, we may easily conclude that the non-formal label encompasses a wide variety of educational systems endowed with features that either lead them towards or away from the established formal systems. Thus, we might infer the existence of a certain degree of continuity linking the formal and the non-formal education. This view is not limited to a merely academic interest because it is an extremely objective and practical one in the search for alternative solutions to educational problems. Given its scope, non-formal education is comprised of an ample diversity of educational situations many of which have played a significant role in the renewal of educational systems. The three educative processes namely correspondence learning, distance learning and open systems because of their features also fall within the scope of non-formal education. Now here are a few assignments from this session for you to work on. Explain the need for non-formal education. What are the features of non-formal education? Discuss on any three non-formal approaches in science education. How science club can contribute in non-formal science education? What are the educational significance of field trips? Now here are a few references for your further reading. Teaching of Biological Sciences, 2nd edition by Ahmad J. Published by PHI Learning Private Limited, New Delhi, 2011. Benchmarks for Science Literacy by American Association for the Advancement of Science. Published by Oxford University Press, New York, 1993. Contemporary Science Teaching by S.S. Chandra. Published by Surjit Publications, New Delhi. 2003. Innovative Science Teaching for Physical Science Teachers, Second Edition by R. Mohan, published by PHI Learning Private Limited, New Delhi, 2002. Learning How to Learn by Noak J. and Godwin B., published by Cambridge University Press, New York, 1984. Teaching of Biological Sciences by Pahuja S. 
published by Vinay Rakheja Publishers, Meerut, 2010. Thank you for watching this program. Let us meet again with a new topic. Until then, bye.